Hi, Fur Baby family. This is Jennifer West with Fur Baby Doc, and today we are covering GULP, G-O-L-P-P. -P. This is an acronym for geriatric onset, laryngeal paralysis, and polyneuropathy. To start, geriatric onset means that the clinical onset of signs is in older age. Laryngeal paralysis is a condition that is best understood by starting with anatomy. Now, the larynx is located in the trachea or windpipe, and it is composed of cartilages. These have very important critical functions. First, they protect the airway when we inhale. They also protect the airway during swallowing of food, liquid, saliva, by relaxing and closing over so that that material goes down the esophagus to the stomach. The other function is that they actually house the vocal cords for barking and vocalizing, so the larynx is referred to as the voice box. The way that the larynx functions is to open ridges of cartilaginous tissue on each side of the windpipe. This is controlled by nerves um, that innervate muscles. So the vagus and recurrent laryngeal nerve are the important nerves um, in this location. In pets, with laryngeal paralysis, the vagus nerve is no longer functioning properly. And as a result, the muscles do not pull back the flaps as they should. And so instead of having a nice open airway, it's a little bit more closed or sometimes completely collapsed. It may be both sides of those cartilage or one side. So it could be a kind of partial or half circle or completely collapsed, depending on how badly they're affected and if it's symmetric or um, if it is bilateral. Signs in early laryngeal paralysis may be quite subtle. They may have a harsh pant, increased panting, or even breathing heavily when they're laying down and relaxed. And they may have a hoarse or raspy sounding bark, a change in their bark sound in about 50% of cases. Later in progression of disease, as they work harder to breathe, you may see your dog kind of smiling while breathing or looking a bit anxious with edges of their mouth pulled back as they try to really inhale and force air down their windpipe. Um, you may see that they tire out on walks or doing exercise that wouldn't normally exhaust them. So exercise intolerance is a part of this because they're just not getting enough air in. And as they go through this process, they may also overheat more easily because dogs do dissipate heat by panting. And when they're having more effort breathing, that can be more difficult as well. So as a um, symptom that hopefully is not the first thing we notice, sometimes dogs will enter full respiratory distress because they're not getting air in, they start to hyperventilate and panic. Diagnostics to determine is this gulp, is it laryngeal paralysis, or is something else affecting your pet, include x-rays of both the neck and the chest. X-rays of the neck help us to evaluate for trauma that caused damage to this area, for a mass, so a cancerous process or a nodule, as well as just make sure that there's no foreign material, any other causes of an obstruction. X-rays of the chest allow us to look for signs of pneumonia. It is common for these pets to aspirate, to accidentally inhale ingesta or food or, or liquid into their lungs and develop aspiration pneumonia. And that's important to screen for prior to anesthesia and also to make sure that we're finding it and treating it. The other parts of diagnosis include a sedated upper airway exam and an endoscopy or basically a laryngoscopy, a scope that allows you to look at the larynx, look at those vocal folds, look at the cartilages and how they're opening and closing with each breath. If they seem to be a little bit paralyzed, that is a huge factor in developing this diagnosis. The other parts of our diagnosis and of our workup is a neurologic exam. Now, the last part of gulp so geriatric onset, laryngeal paralysis, polyneuropathy. These patients may just start to develop Heinz limb weakness and muscle loss. So we do evaluate 
them for their muscle tone, their proprioception or ability to know where their legs are in space, as well as for normal reflexes. And polyneuropathy is a really, really important part of this pathogenesis or this disease. The vagus nerve, as I, I touched on briefly earlier, the vagus nerve is one of the main nerves innervating the muscles in the larynx. It is the 10th cranial nerve out of 12, and it's the longest. It has both sensory and motor functions in both the larynx and many other parts of the body, including the heart, the digestive system, and elsewhere. So patients with this condition are not only going to develop degeneration and difficulty with their larynx, they will also ultimately develop a more flaccid and large mega esophagus, a large esophagus that's not functioning as well to allow um, swallowing. And they will also ultimately develop a very slow progressive paresis or weakness in their hind limbs. Now, coming on to treatment. Medical care during a breathing crisis is urgent. A dog that is stressed out, that starts realizing they can't breathe well, acts just like a human. You start to hyperventilate, they panic. They go into, I need to breathe, freak out mode. So one of the first things we do is provide oxygen, sometimes to start just by a face mask, give them a sedative to help them calm down and not hyperventilate, and also cool them down, because as I said, they will likely overheat quickly. If it gets bad enough, we do sometimes intubate them to protect their airway, make sure that we are enabling them to breathe and not collapse things further. Long term, after an event like that, a patient should be considered for surgery. Surgery is really the standard of care for laryngeal paralysis. And the most common procedure performed is called a tie back. A tie back is a unilateral arytenoid lateralization surgery. What that stands for is a procedure that uses suture to permanently tie back one of these arytenoid cartilages. And on one side of the larynx, we have a greater opening than the other side. It is only typically done on one side to prevent aspiration, so keeping the airway protected to a degree. There are other procedures, including a variation actually created by one of the surgeons at my personal hospital, Dr. Ken Sadnaga. And this procedure is called a BVEEP. It is a bilateral vocal fold excision and bilateral arytenoidopexy. So this procedure addresses both the intraluminal and extraluminal component of the disease process. It is instead of tying back one side, it addresses both sides, but to a lesser degree, so that in the end, the larynx is still symmetric. In addition, it is helping for both the intraluminal opening as well as the tissues outside. So in this surgery, the compromised vocal folds are removed to open the lower intraluminal area and there's a pexy of the retinoid cartilages to the sides. So again, not a full opening of the windpipe, but a more partial. This is a um, condition that again is going to progress. There is no cure for gulp. There is a neuropathy going on, and as a result, ultimately these dogs will have hind limb weakness, and they will have higher risk of aspiration but dogs are not in pain. The process does not cause them much distress beyond the breathing. So if that is addressed surgically, they can go on to live several more years, depending on how old it is diagnosed. In short, that is a common, common presentation that we'll see a older Labrador or other breed that comes in having some weakness in the hind limbs, some muscle was wasting over their thighs and the owners note that their breathing has been really raspy. And they'll have a strider, an effort and a noise on inhalation. That's pretty classic, really loud right over their neck. Um, please reach out to your veterinarian, have your dog evaluated. If you've noted any of these signs, because as I said, it is treatable, while it is not curable, your dog is not gonna be in pain and it can go on to have good quality of life.